Hey guys, welcome to my guide on how to better control your chainsaw as the hillbilly in Dead by Daylight. By the end of this guide, you should know a few in-game exercises that you can practice, as well as some easy tips and tricks that you can keep in mind while using Hillbilly's chainsaw, specifically while playing Drift King Hillbilly. To give you an idea on what to expect from this guide, here's a quick overview on what we'll be covering in this video, specifically some timestamps on where specific information is in case you want to jump to particular parts of the video. I want to be clear that this is a guide on how to control your chainsaw as hillbilly, not how to win with hillbilly. Though I do have plenty of full game examples on how to play and win with hillbilly on this YouTube channel. Also keep in mind that much of this video uses the extra control add-on spiked boots, as well as some variants on the second add-on, namely doob engraving. This is because I'm best known for my Drift King Hillbilly, a speedy but well-controlled version of the Hillbilly. But everything I talk about can be applied to both Basic Billy and really any add-on combination. But let's be honest, extra control and extra speed makes for a fun and challenging game for both the Hillbilly and the survivors. Okay, so firstly, I'll go into the main add-on variant I'd recommend for Hillbilly to best improve your control while still being a challenge to the survivors. Secondly, I'll talk on the importance of opening up the angle and give examples of exactly how to do this. Thirdly, I stress the importance of constantly looking ahead and keeping mental notes on the locations of obstacles, generators, and any other objects to improve my future laps. I then give some exercises that you can practice in your games or in customs to improve your hillbilly control. They apply to both long distance and shorter burst chainsaws, both trying to improve your ability to snipe a survivor in a precise, difficult to hit location. We then take a quick detour, diving into some advanced hillbilly control techniques, namely chainsaw corner flicks and the 180 double back. Both useful tricks to add to your hillbilly arsenal. Honestly, both of these could have a longer, fuller video into each technique. So please let me know if you'd like me to create a separate guide into both of these. Finally, I give an in-game real example on controlling your chainsaw on a map you haven't yet explored. This is the ultimate example of using every control tip we've talked about during this video and applying them to a real game on a fresh map. Without further ado, let's get started. The main two variants of Hillbilly add-on I see run together are spiked boots with dad's boots, which are the double turning add-ons you can see on screen now, spiked boots with dad's boots, uh, as well as spiked boots with doom engraving. I want to quickly say there is a significant difference in both how easy it is to control the chainsaw, uh, as well as the kill potential you have whilst in a sprint between these two add-on variants. Double turning add-ons make controlling Hillbilly's chainsaw super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> You're roaming the map going pretty damn slow with plenty of control, and the only thing that will cause you to crash, really, is your arm getting sore or your mind drifting away from the game out of pure boredom. I don't have a lot to say about these add-ons, though the techniques I'm going to use can uh, be applied to these add-ons too, the one benefit of these add-ons are the slower movement speeds, which makes more turns possible as you're not going as fast, you have more time to curve, uh, curve some more difficult corners. Uh, it can feel pretty great to enter a dead end of a map chainsawing and perfectly drift around it and keep the chainsaw sprint alive. Jumping from the two turning add-ons to only one turning add-on with Doom engraving is like moving from a push bike to a motorbike. And this applies to the survivors too. It's a lot harder to react to and get out of the way of a speedy motorbike trying to run you over. Comparing that to a push bike that's significantly slower and you have more time to react to. Using Hillbilly's chainsaw without any add-ons is an option, but it's the most boring. You were 
predictable, restricted in your movements, and slow. There's a certain amount of prestige and class that comes from winning without add-ons, but honestly, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I want to give the survivors a fun game, a run for their money, and to pull off some sweet chainsaws, which you simply can't do when running basic Billy without any add-ons. Though the techniques I will talk about are still applicable to basic hillbilly, though significantly less exciting results. So we're going to jump into a custom game with Plumum, and we're going to go through some of the techniques you can apply to your own billy to get more control with his chainsaw. The number one tip I have for better control of your chainsaw is to open up the angle. And you'll hear me stress this a number of times throughout this video. When faced with a sharp corner, a hillbilly who runs in a straight line and turns when needed will turn significantly less than a hillbilly who prepares for the turn by opening up the angle. You do this by constantly flicking your mouse either left or right, depending on whether your upcoming turn is going to be to the left or to the right. If you're making a left turn, you want to open up the angle by flicking your mouse to the right and creating more space to turn into when you do turn to the left. Even the smallest amount of extra space can be enough to continue the chainsaw sprint and cover distance on the map. I'd like to show just how much of a difference, how much further of a turn you can get when you open up an angle instead of just continuing the chainsaw sprint in a straight direction and turning when you want to. First, we're gonna do the straight chainsaw and turn when I need to. Straight, 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 and turn. We couldn't quite make that corner. So the idea is to try and bend the chainsaw around that corner by opening up the angle so much that when we get down to this spot, it's gonna be a simple turn to get around that rock, unlike where it was when we kept the chainsaw straight and only reacted when we were ready to turn. Now, depending on the direction you're traveling around the map, clockwise or counterclockwise, there are different pieces of advice I can provide when trying to analyze the area you've entered and the best route through it. If you're going counterclockwise, as I will be in this example, when you see an object ahead of you, it is always, pretty much always, a better decision to make your way on the right-hand side of an object and start turning around to the left. That will sharpen the upcoming corners that you're able to do as you've gone further right in preparation for the turn ahead. And that doesn't apply if there is a giant object in the way that will prevent it, but a good example here will be going right-hand side of these trees, right-hand side of these rocks. It's gonna sharpen the angle for me to be able to turn around that corner when it was a bit more difficult. Right-hand side of these little barricades, this is gonna be a, a really difficult corner. I doubt I'll make it because it is very sharp, but my gosh, that was close. I gave that a really good run. And the same applies when going clockwise. If you hug the left-hand side, any turns to the right will be significantly sharper. A good example will be, of course, instead of just going straight down here, we cut the left, we hug the left, hug the left, hug the left, hug the left, and then turn right now. We're gonna hug the left, hug the left, hug the left, and we're gonna try and turn this as soon as we see fit, and that'll be now. Gonna keep hugging left, hugging left, hugging left, turn right now. Taking the left hand side, we're gonna go through the middle and see if we can make it out the other side. It's gonna be a bit difficult, but we'll try. No. <laughs> Gave it a good crack. But you can see the philosophy of opening up the angle and creating a sharper turn as a result. When playing Drift King Hillbilly, your eyes need to be constantly looking ahead to see what obstacles will be upcoming and keeping a mental note about where they were so on your future laps you won't be caught off by some oddly placed trees or uh, an odd rock that wasn't supposed to be there, you didn't expect to be there. So I'm, as I'm chainsawing around the map right now, I'm looking ahead, I'm seeing what could potentially be in the way. And they can't always do what you, you can't always do the perfect thing. You can't always dodge the uh, you can't always dodge the upcoming obstacles. But you do your best by preparing for it and trying to catch the survivors on generators at the same time. I'd like to show you a couple of in-game uh, sort of exercises that you can practice to improve your hillbilly. 
Alrighty, so the goal is to make it back around and hit Ace from this spot here. See if we can get a full lap. Maybe not the entire every single section, but we're going to try and make a full lap and return back and hit Ace. That's really our dream situation here. We're going to do a lap and we'll cut early because Killer Shack can be a real nuisance in these scenarios. And we're also going to keep going here. We're going to go wide around our big lumpy mound thing. We're going to cut early here as this is a notorious dead zone. We're coming back around like this. We're setting up and we are going to slam dunk ace just like that. Hoo! So this is a great exercise you can do if you have a friend and you want to practice your billy and they have, some, they have something else to do. They can simply stand in a location and your job is to try and bend your chainsaw around to get where they are. This is a good example because it is a very tight bend with an object on the right and object on the left and you have to try and thread the needle to be able to hit the ace over in that location. So I'm going to use my, my approach here. We're going to try and hit a wide right. We're going to cut left soon. We're going to bring it back and we're going to slam dunk just like that. Hitting a chainsaw flick refers to when the hillbilly is chasing a survivor around a loop. There is a particularly long wall that the hillbilly can chainsaw down and they can close the distance that the survivor has to down them in one hit. Now this can be quite difficult to do, and honestly, this deserves a whole video on its own. But hitting the chainsaw flick perfectly and timing it around the corner can mean you close the distance very quickly and catch the survivor off guard like so. But if you want to know more about this going into the practice of back revving and understanding everything that goes into hitting a flick like that, please comment below and we'll make a video dedicated to learning flicks, especially for any of you hillbilly mains that want to try and learn flick billy even after the nerf of his overheat that made it pretty difficult to play flick billy. Extra note, flick billy is often played with doom engraving and death engraving, not the double turning, not the turning add-on and the speed add-on that I have at the moment, but you can play it with the add-ons that I have as you do have that increased speed, plus you have the luxury of increased turning, which could play a critical part, especially against the counterplayed flick billy, which is often taking loops a bit wider than usual. Now, one technique I love to apply when playing against survivors, particularly clever survivors, cluey survivors that know that you have, a, uh, you have the extra speed, they're predicting what you're going to do, a great example, especially when the survivor is around a loop and you're not able to catch them, is to leave. Simply leave. Start revving your chainsaw. And right when you're about to chainsaw in that direction, double back with a 180 and catch them off guard. A survivor that doesn't think they're in danger is infinitely easier to catch off guard and knock them onto the ground than a survivor that is ready to pull the pallet at a moment's notice. You can make extremely sharp turns in the first one second of a chainsaw's use. Then it starts to steady out. A good example, it goes straight and then you've got kind of this limited turning, right? In that first second though, the ability to turn left or right is significantly heightened. Watch how sharp this, this first second is when we try and turn that corner. It is so much sharper. So you can use this. You can double back. You can start revving your chainsaw and when you get closer, you start opening and then 90 degrees, turn 180 back onto your target. This takes a little bit of getting used to. It isn't easy to hit a 180 chainsaw, especially consistently, especially against survivors in an active game where there isn't just a person standing there waiting to be 180 practiced on. So I have a couple of little tips to improve your 180 chainsaws and just your chainsaws in general. The first one is, in every scenario, every engagement with a survivor, go for the chainsaw. Don't take the easy mouse one out. Aim to improve your chainsaw. You might miss, you might lose the whole game. I don't care and neither should you. The goal is to improve your chainsaws and just have a crack. You know how many 180 chainsaws I missed that completely flicked and I'll hit that rock instead when I first go? But, oh yeah, fine. Whoopsie daisies. Crash into the rock. Does that mean I don't attempt a 180 next time I'm in a game or every chance I have? No! Next time you leave and then 180 and boom! It's more of a 90 degree, but for the survivor it feels like a 180. And the reason is they see you leaving, 
they kind of phase out and they start going back to the safety of their generator or their work. And then suddenly you're right back on them. You've left, you've done a 180 turn and you're right back on them. You've caught them off guard with their pants down and suddenly they're on a hook and you're in a great place in the game. This has caught some of the best survivors on the oceanic region server uh, off guard and should be a technique that you add to your hillbilly uh, tool set. Something that you're able to pull out when you're in a difficult place in the game or you just want to and just go boom back onto a location and catch them off guard. I'm not going to hit them so I don't have to drop them. <laughs> I don't have to drop my mum again. Let's see if we can do a full 180 return and return back onto where Plum Mum was. Once again, what are we doing? What are we doing, guys? We're 180. We started with a 180 turn, and now we're opening up the angle. We're constantly improving the angle, ready for the next turn. I don't remember exactly where Plum Mum was. I think she's in here to the left somewhere. Is that right? Here she is, and there, boom. We're back, and we get her on the second go. And the amount of heat that is utilized by continuing the chainsaw sprint instead of instead of uh, stopping and then restarting i believe it ends up being significantly less as a result <laughs> poor mum's laptop just ran out of battery <laughs> i thought it'd be helpful to show an in-game example of controlling your chainsaw on a map that you haven't yet explored now this is only really applicable to maps that you can actually do potentially a full lap on. That's excluding maps like Larry's, uh, Underground Complex, Midwich can be a real pain, uh, and of course the game. Those are all maps that tend to be a bit of a pain to control. So don't stress too much if you're not able to get a full lap when trying to use uh, Drift King Hillbilly on those maps, especially if you're using the Doom Engraving uh, spiked boots combo as the extra speed makes it literally impossible to make some of those corners Anyway, I wanted to give an in-game example. Hopefully we'll go to the Azarov's map that I sent and Show you guys just how to control your hillbilly in a map you haven't seen before I'm going to be constantly looking ahead I'm going to be constantly opening up the angle and the most important thing is I'm keeping track of what I pass So I'm remembering important landmarks I'm remembering where survivors were last seen and I'm remembering the position of generators for future Approaches onto that generator as it's useless to approach a generator from an angle where a survivor can simply walk in a different direction and manage to get it. Now that's fantastic because it was a battle between Midwich and Azarovs. All right, let's see if we can get a lap and Wrecker's Yard, not too shabby. All right, I've already seen at the start that there's a big old door right away. We're going to get around that tree and we're going to keep our chainsaw going. We're opening up the angle and we're looking ahead. If we see any survivors, we're going to have a crack at them, but they tend to get out of the way, especially if they have any sort of alert. Now we know where two of the survivors are, two se separate sets of scratch marks, and of course we saw that Claudette at the beginning. Now this was a difficult corner at the beginning, but we'll go through the middle this time. See if we can cut it a little bit sharper. Not gonna work, that's fine. Uh, we'll go wide, I guess, and see what we can, if we can make this corner. Oh, I almost stuffed that up with my frantic arm movements. Oh, I could have gotten him there if I'd committed. I was a little bit nervous about crashing the chainsaw right off the bat. That's fine. We'll keep this going. And we're going to try and approach this generator up on my left. Now, we're in the same spot we were before. Difficult turn. And we're going to try and hit ace this time on this angle. Can we get it? Boom! That is how you start the game with Drift King Hillbilly. Whew! Now, I will be uploading this full game of this, uh, the full game, if you're interested in seeing how I played out after that start. Of course, I did waste a significant amount of time trying to hit that long chainsaw sprint, which possibly could have stopped any time I saw the survivors, but I enjoyed the challenge, and it's good practice regardless. Alright, so I will be uploading the full game up onto my YouTube channel. I'll title it, uh... I'll title it some kind of title that's relevant to this video, and I'll put a link to it in the description below if you are interested in watching that video. And seeing how this bad boy turns out. Ah. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, you learnt a thing or two ready for your next Drift King Hillbilly matches. So you can saw around the outsides of the map, do some Formula 1 race car driving, and most importantly, don't 
crash. <laughs> Impress your friends. Ah, and if you did enjoy the video, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel, dropping a like on the video. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. And if you can't wait until the next video, if you have any bearing questions, burning questions, please swing by my Twitch stream, which we do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, link will be in the description below. Uh, yeah, anyway, thanks very much, guys, for being here, and hopefully I'll uh, see you in the next one. Plum out. We're down to one generator now. It's, we're missing... Who haven't we seen for a while? David is probably the most... You don't see many firecracker saves, do you? You don't see many firecracker saves. Respect for the firecracker save. Bird missing, someone was here. Very, very highly respectful in my eyes. To get a firecracker save. They're probably downstairs, but until Discordance confirms as such, I'm just gonna keep chainsawing around the map, hoping to run into a rogue survivor doing jack shit like that. Oh yeah! That's Drift King Hillbilly at its finest.